Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I, uh, well the first thing you'll notice with this video is that I actually got a new table top for my garage, and the, uh, the table top is, uh, it was gifted to me, and it's, it wasn't even a full table, it was just the table top, and so, um, I put a new table top on top of the old table that I normally paint on, just so that it would give me a flat surface to paint on, which is pretty nice because normally when I paint on that other table, because it's just like a cheap plastic card table, it's kind of dented in the middle. Um, but this gives me a nice flat surface to paint on, so that's kind of cool. Um, today's colors I'll be using are black, gold, white, and silver. And I'll be doing a dabbed painting, um, but I'm... I tried a little different, something a little different with this painting today, and I'm, I'm actually like doing a voiceover later, so it's not real time. But anyway, uh, what I was trying to do with this painting is instead of doing the, it's a crushed painting, and instead of doing the crushed painting just right on the canvas, what I was attempting to do with this painting was put the paint on the wax paper and then painting from the wax paper onto the canvas and one of the reasons that i was trying to do it this way was simply because normally when i paint and i do these crush paintings where i you know use the corrugated plastic and and i put it on like directly to the canvas and just kind of dab it over and over again um the Sometimes the paint is so much for like the little areas on the canvas that it tends to pull together, right? And so I was trying to avoid that by, you know, putting the paint onto like the wax paper here and painting from that instead. That way I could kind of you know, pull the paint from the wax paper onto the canvas and create that design that I normally do with the, you know, these crushed or sorry, not crushed paintings, but dab paintings where I dab the paint over and over. And I was trying to control how much paint actually went onto the canvas. Um, and you can see that it kind of started from light to dark, went from white to silver into gold and then black. And, um, well, to be honest with you, it really didn't work as well as I thought. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's a trial and error thing, right? It was just something I wanted to try to kind of cut down on how much paint was actually going on the canvas. Because normally I'll just put the paint on the canvas. If you've seen any of my videos where I do these dab paintings, I put the can like paint in little splotches on the canvas. And then I'll take like a piece of corrugated plastic and then I'll dab it from one color to another across the entire canvas to kind of fill the canvas with the little splash marks, I guess you would call them. Um, but sometimes, like I said, because of the canvas or the paper that I'm using, it, it, when I put the paint on there, it will be too much, right? And it will just kind of pool and wherever there's like low spots on the paper or the canvas, the paint will kind of pool into that. and it wouldn't be so bad, but the problem with that is that when it pulls, it kind of pulls the other colors into it. So it kind of messes up the little like designs that that makes. And on top of that, um, then you have these really uneven kind of valleys of, like you'll have these big splotches of paint and then you'll have these really thin layers of paint. And I guess it's okay. I, I still like some of the paintings I've done that were like that. And in fact, because it wasn't working, you'll notice that that's actually what I ended up doing anyway, because this was really just an experiment. And sometimes you just have to try things. I mean, if you're, if you're trying to perfect a certain technique or if you're just trying to, you know, keep the painting interesting where you're not doing the same thing all the time, sometimes you just have to do that where you... Do something a little different to try to you know learn from it and that's what this was this was kind of a trial and error thing so ultimately putting it on the wax paper first didn't work for me um 
but that doesn't mean it doesn't work maybe for other people or for different methods or something like that. I think what could work is if if I used more paint and, and now that I'm thinking about it, I actually hadn't thought of this before, but maybe I'll do this. It's just kind of depending, but what might work is if I used a little more paint and just kind of put that paint into a, like maybe a tray, right? Like a cookie sheet or just a really thin, like narrow tray, uh, maybe an inch thick or less. It's kind of wide and just pour some paint into that. And then just taking my, my tool here, my, my corrugated plastic and kind of dipping it into that and then bringing it over to the canvas. Because the problem with the wax fair was probably that it wasn't enough paint, right? I mean, that's, I'm pretty sure that that's the issue with why it didn't work was just because it wasn't enough paint uh, to kind of transfer from the wax paper over to the canvas. And that's why I ended up having to do, you know, what you see here where I'm just kind of pouring the paint on and then dabbing it over and over again. Um, so maybe I'll do that because that might actually work with putting it into a small tray or something and then kind of going from there because then I could pour the paint up to that level. So I'd have a decent amount of paint. It would use a lot of paint. Um, so I probably wouldn't want to use like too big of a container, but that way I could also get a decent amount of paint each time I dip that corrugated plastic into that paint and then transfer it over to the painting, I'd actually get a really decent amount of paint on it. So that might actually work. Um, so I may consider doing that in the future. I don't know. This, uh, I kind of like these paintings, but at the same time, like, the other issue kind of that I run into with gloss enamel is that when I do these paintings, they tend to uh, mix, I guess. The, the colors mix after dabbing it over and over again because you're just running over the same colors. And that's one issue that I constantly have with gloss enamel that's a challenge where if I, the colors, because they're, the paint is so thin as opposed to like acrylic or, or oil or anything like that, because the paint is so thin, it mixes really easily. Um, so like if I kind of dab over the same areas a couple times, you know, those black and white kind of just mix into gray and then it starts to carry that gray into everything else. And if you've seen any of my other videos where I use gloss enamel, you'll see that this is an issue. I think what I may do in the future is I may do some more um, just line paintings because those tend to turn out the best and those are actually my best sellers. So I may actually do some more of those uh, when I paint in the next few days. So that'll probably be the bulk of the next few videos, just, just as adds up. I still plan on doing another Pollock style painting, like a decent sized one. Um, but I'm not going to do it until about 1,500 subscribers. So I think it, the problem with that is that it just it's a lot of setup time for me to be able to do a Pollock style painting. I probably said that in another video, but you know what? I have to have like a couple hours kind of locked in where I can do that. And you know, I've got to have all the supplies set up, the canvas, all that stuff. And normally, if you watch these videos, you know, I can do one of these paintings like. 20 minutes or less well pock style painting usually takes like two hours at least so i know that doesn't sound like a lot of time but at the same time it's it's a lot of time compared to these paintings and i normally just do these paintings like after work or when i have a few minutes at home you know in the end of the day or on the weekend or something like that so i do plan on doing more of the pollock style paintings it's just gonna be a little bit of time before i can do the next one so I'll probably do it 500 or 1,500 subscribers. Um, that gives me kind of a milestone and something to look forward to to be able to do it. So just as a heads up on the type of content that's coming out in the future, it'll probably be more paintings that are kind of linear uh, simply because, you know, those are the ones that I have been enjoying doing lately. And those are my, actually my best sellers. So I don't know. We'll see. If I get other suggestions, we'll, we'll take a look, but uh, that's it for now. So 
anyway, this is the uh, the final piece. I was overall pretty happy with it, and uh, you know, it it didn't work out the way that I planned, but it worked out in the end. So I guess that's uh, that's something. But anyway, I will catch you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoy it, and take care. Bye, guys.